Hi and welcome to uh, Maya 105. Um, so today we are going to do something a bit more creative than usual, which is um, animation. Um, so if you have a very high production value and, make, and you make a, let's say, Hollywood blockbuster with CG characters, most of the time you're going to see this. A man who was put in a suit, which has some dots on it, and uh, the motions of the character uh, of the of the actor are uh, translated onto the CG character. Um, so that the CG character basically is controlled or acted out by that actor. In this case, the very famous Andy Serkis, who did uh, the character of Gollum. But in the field of uh, well, computer animated films like. Uh, something from Disney Pixar or uh, DreamWorks or whatever. And for pretty much all of, well, the hobby short films and uh, things done by universities uh, or, or students um, is done by uh, animating all the characters by hand with the controls that we have uh, added to our characters last time uh, when we rigged them for the animators to, uh, well, animate. And um, that's what we are going to do today. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into Maya where we have this beautiful rigged character lined up. Um, so 3D animation is kind of an art form, uh, art form. So I'm just going to explain you. Oops, I can delete that. That's just a light. Um, okay, it's locked somehow. Um, well, CG animation is uh, sort of an art form because it's very hard to get all the movements right and in a way that it looks natural. I will give you some tips later on, but be first we do, uh, before we do so. I'm going to show you some, uh, well, the techniques first, how you uh, start at all. So if you have a character like this one, which I think is called um, Emily, um, well, you, you can see that she has controls on, 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 her, uh, on her body, which we can move. For example, if we click on that little... Uh, triangular thingy we can move her arm and her hand and I don't know if we take this we can uh, bend her, uh, her her head forward her upper body and I believe if we uh, would press that we could <laughs> just move her uh, her belly whatever uh, most of the time you will see that an Anyway, that, that rig system will have a uh, main control. Um, in this case, this... Oh, Bonnie is her name, I'm sorry. Um, in this case, uh, down here, most of the time it's at the bottom, sometimes it, it's on the top. And uh, we can use that to basically control the whole model, but we will never, ever um, animate that. Um, so we will never ever move that in the course of our animation. So animation, of course, is something which uh, is done over time, essentially. So uh, we have this timeline in Maya. In this case, it's one second. It's 224 frames. Um, one second consists of 24 frames. That's pretty much industry standard. Sometimes it's more dependent on the region, but the international standard is uh, 24 FPS. And if you press play, of course, nothing happens in that second. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I will uh, make the animation a little bit more well, longer. Um, so uh, for this, I uh, will change that, that value down here, which says uh, 24 at the moment to maybe 250. So we have a little more time to play with. Um, so around about 10 seconds. Um, so if we have our character, um, I would like to make her uh, walk. And uh, for this, I will first open up the attribute editor right here. And uh, then we can click on the foot, which is here. And uh, as you can see, if we click on that little controller, we can control the foot. And 
well, move her. And of course, when we walk, we have our uh, our hip a little bit more uh, well downwards. And uh, well, she she's right in the walk. Just put her in pose somehow, like so. I don't know. Doom 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 doom. So you will see most animators have, uh, well, have their ideas or their motions acted out first, or they have a mirror in front of them so so they can see how uh, they behave they behave and then they uh, put that on the character or put that spirit on on the character. And um, as you can see, I now put her in pose pose and um, well, we can set our first key. Um, a key frame which uh, just pretty much saves the uh, the control that we click on on key uh, for that uh, very moment in time for that frame. So if I would decide to key that uh, right foot, for example, I would go to the channel box editor, and here we can see some values. We have of course translate, uh, some some additional foot controls which we don't need right now for the basics. Um, you, of course, can play around with those. Um, we didn't rotate anything, we just translated Z, which is the blue axis right here. So you can see the value changes in, in, in the Z, in the Z um, uh, box. And we can just click on that, right click and say key selected. And then we have something red here and we have also if you click on the foot, something right in the timeline, which so shows us that we have a key right now, uh, that we have created a key. And, um, well, if I would now move that foot to, I don't know, this place, and just scrap in the timeline a little bit, you would see that, uh, well, the key just jumps back. And, of course, since I just keyed, the uh, Z value, just the Z, Z value is uh, resetted. So um, I can then, or another thing I could do if I would not just want to uh, key that one, the Z, but uh, something which is more convenient and more used across the, in or I would say more used across the industry or more used for most animators is if you pr just press S and S just creates a key for pretty much everything that is keyable on that object and uh, if you then move that foot around and uh, swipe on the time you can see that it created that key again and uh, we can just press key or press s for that left foot also and maybe for the hip as well and uh, now if we go a few uh, frames like to, to, I don't know, 20. Um, we can say that she uh, walked a little bit further, like so, for example. Oops, the, the leg is a bit twisty, isn't it? Oh, why does it, why does it turn? I have no idea, but I'm just going to press S now we can see that that now moves and of course we would have to uh, key that hip also like so and that would move i still don't i, I seriously i don't know what that bug is um just give me one second all right of course um we have that uh, knee control right here which if uh, used correctly is in front of the knee and controls the uh, well how the knee is bent and which direction is a bent and of course if it is behind the knee the knee bends to the uh, other direction so maybe it's best for this uh, demonstrating purpose to just put that very far in front of her and just keep on animating of course we want to key that uh, right foot also 
go to uh, frame 40, put that foot here, press S, put that hip here, press S, maybe the foot is too far, like so. And now we have like a walking animation, a very, very simple and easy walk. And uh, if we just take the uh, <laughs> very, very lazy, the arms or the, uh, the hands and animate them with her, we can see that she walks. That of course doesn't look very natural, but uh, you get the idea, you get the technique, I think, uh, how keyframes work. So, um, if we would now uh, select everything, uh, which uh, also selects, of course, the mesh, which we can turn off. I will do so for the final file I give to you. Oh, there are already controls right here. So, if we... Uh, well, there are uh, display layers in Maya, which I'm, I think I haven't shown you yet. Um, if you just go to the channel box editor, you, if you have not selected anything, have... Uh, um, different layers inside of that file. Uh, we have the controls, we, which we can turn visible or not visible. We have the geometry, which we can visible or not visible. And the final gather, which, uh, well, honestly, I have no idea what it is, because I just downloaded that file, because I thought it was a nice rig for you to, uh, um, well, for you to try out and uh, see how animation works. Um, we can lock the geometry by pressing that button uh, right here, which just is T right now. Uh, T means template, so we just have, have, have her in wireframe. But if you press on that T again, we have an R, which just makes the mesh non-selectable. So we can press on her all we want, but uh, we are not able to click on her. And uh, if we now select everything, all the controls are selected, but not the mesh. That is what we want. And now we also see all the keys. And uh, if we would decide to, let's say, delete a key, like that key on key on frame 40, for example, we can just press Shift and uh, or a hold or hold down Shift, and uh, with the left mouse button we can drag inside of the timeline, and this way we can select that, select that key, press right click, and press delete and then that key is deleted. We'll press command Z for this because I don't want it to be deleted. Another handy trick is if we again hold down shift and uh, hold the left mouse button, drag on it, we have little arrows down here. Um, with the middle arrows we can just move the uh, animation across. So if you want to in that position but uh, later in the, uh, in the animation we can just yeah. Move or shift the keyframes to uh, to the to the back, and we also have those uh, arrows on the uh, very far sides. Uh, if we just click and drag those, we can see that we can uh, scale the animation on the timeline so that it would take longer, or it just takes a very very short amount of time to make her to make that move for her. Okay, but I'm also going to press Ctrl Z for that. If you want to have more control, however, over what you have animated, and uh, for this I'm going only going to select the, uh, I don't know, left foot for now, uh, we can go into the uh, animation menu up here, go to animation, and here under Windows we have animation editors and graph editor, which opens up this Uh, it looks very technical now, and uh, it might be a little bit intimidating, but uh, it really isn't. Um, so on the left side we can see uh, what is selected, which is in this case this uh, control on the left foot. And um, underneath we can see all the uh, attributes on that foot, uh, these attributes, which are... Um, keyed or which have a key on them. Um, so I can see nothing much happens inside of the graph editor. Um, it's a simple coordinate system. We have a value, well, you, you know it from, from math class, I'm sure. Um, up here we have the time, 
it's go, go, going to frame 20. And here we have the values. Um, it's always in Maya. We can uh, toggle, to toggle around and move around in that uh, view with by pressing uh, option and middle mouse button. And uh, can move around. Okay, we can see that we have just one animation right now which does something. Um, because those lines, of course, are all steady values across all frames. But uh, this blue one is very interesting because it starts at minus 3 at first and adds at, I don't know, 5 or 5.1 or something on frame 20. And if you click on that, we can see, of course, it is translate Z, which, surprise, surprise, su surprise, surprise, <laughs> Is the one wet which we have animated the one axis the, this one namely and uh, there are a few things we can see here as it is a change in values that is represented within that curve um, the animation starts slowly gets faster and ends up slowly again um, if we click on uh, on that curve or on a point on that curve, we can see that we have little handles uh, right here, which we uh, could move. So we could say that it starts very fast and ends up very slow, which uh, would look like 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 this. Um, it's very fast for you, of course, but it starts very very fast and ends up. As you can see, it's already in the uh, well time-wise in the middle and it's already uh, pretty much in the position that we want it to be in the end so um, we can control the uh, the uh, speed and the timing with those curves if you messed up somehow and I don't know it looks like so we can just select everything and we have here a little button which is auto which just um, makes a neat little curve for us which is pretty much standard uh, also we can press this button which makes it all straight um, of course we can change that again by uh, clicking on those values and we can also make it stepped so it's just well there's no interpolation basically between those frames and uh, it just well jumps and uh, well if you take if we take a look at uh, our animation we can see that it just yeah it, it, it just it just jumps um, but of course we do want an animation and I'm just going to press auto for now um, so this is pretty much the uh, well, technique of course we can add keyframes that's one little handy thing by uh, pressing E I and uh, selecting everything we can add Oops. Why doesn't it work? One second. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, of course we can do uh, some other thing, which is uh, like if we want an additional key to control the curve, we can just go to the time frame we want to be, right click, insert key, if we have that curve selected, and then we have another key which we can move around. And of course, if we click on those values, we can see that, um, well, we can see the animations on those values. And um, well, it's pretty much self-explanatory, so I'm just going to, well, play. I'm going to play, uh, let you play around with it with the features, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, well technical part. Um, but there's one other thing which is more or less for the creative part, which I wanted to show you, and uh, just hold on, it's going to be a little bit of theory now. Um, just going to go back to the presentation and um, we're now coming to the animation principles. Um, the animation principles um, 
Well, it's uh, it's it's rules or guidelines. Uh, Twelve of those um, exist, uh, which are uh, developed by Pixar or, or no, no, they are developed by Disney. Sorry, um, in I think between the 1930s and the 1980s, there was a book published in the 1980s presenting those principles to the world, um, and they are still used today very heavily across um, 2D animation, 3D animation, some are very technical, some are more or less self-explanatory. Um, I'm just going to go quickly over them, so you have heard, you have heard of them and uh, can, uh, well, insert them into your uh, animation tests that you will hopefully do. But before I will do so, um, I was on Twitter the other day and uh, you know some some of you may know those very annoying TikTok videos that jump up from time to time. Um, oh, it's it got some sound. And uh, I just came across this one. Um, well, and this one has got a lot of attention across the uh, Twitter community because it well, she looks like an animated girl. She doesn't move very natural, and uh, she moves in a very well. She could be, she could be animated. She looks like a Disney princess essentially, and um, the reason this was on my Twitter timeline was because uh, someone I follow, uh, an animation artist, um, has a. Um, oops, I don't want that. Has um, analyzed what uh, what this girl did in this video, which is basically um, using all the uh, animation principles which I am about to show you. Um, so this is one reason something you uh, think would have to dis uh, consider is that animation most of the time is a very good looking movement, but it's not very, I would say, natural. Um, because animation over the years, especially animation done by Disney and uh, I would say Western Western animation has developed its own style, which uh, is pretty much indistinguishable and uh, to which those rules apply, um, the animation principles. Okay, let's jump right into them. So uh, the first one is Squash and stretch. Uh, well, it's pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Um, by squashing and stretching the character, in this case it's a cube, uh, we can see that it is, we, we can get a sense of its weight, of its structure, of its flexibility, and so on, of its height, of its, of its size maybe. And um, when using this technique, which might be, well, the, the most important one of animation, um, if you do so, if you squash and stretch, um, just keep in mind that the volume of the uh, of the character needs to be the same. So the cube, when it's on the bottom, you can see it's, although it's very squashed, it's uh, of course getting wider um, because it's losing, <laughs> it's losing height essentially. So um, or height in uh, height, excuse me, height essentially, and. Um, yeah, the volume is uh, very consistent. Um, all right, the second one is anticipation. Anticipation means that uh, before you before you do an action or before an animated character does an action, it sort of goes into the other direction. So if I'm going to, I don't know, move my arm, I'm going to the other direction first and then I'm going to move my arm in that direction that I want to. In, ex in the example of the qubit, well, it, before it rolls over, it sort of, well, rotates around a bit first and uh, pretty much, well, moves his body in order to get enough uh, momentum to make that rotation. And this is anticipation, so sort of in, um, uh, let's say, Let's say it's a uh, something that happens before you do something. Okay, 
next one is staging, it's very easy. It's just that you uh, want to embrace also an animation on the parts which are important and uh, or you want to focus on the parts which are important. So if you have a uh, character which holds something in her hand, you of course want to have the hand focused also animation wise and will not have anything else very heavily animated um, which draws all the attention from the head from from the hand so staging is more or less something creative that you have to uh, set your focus right uh, straight action straight ahead and action pose to pose are two different animation techniques uh, one is uh, that you just Pretty much, uh, well, straight ahead is that you uh, animate pretty much every keyframe and uh, from start to finish, and post to poses that you uh, have all your poses um, which you want to, the character to have animated and just interpolate between them, which sometimes does not look as natural, but most of the time is faster to do so. So um, something you will have to decide and something, both, both techniques are used in the industry very heavily and um, well, it's just two different techniques. Um, follow through and overlapping action. That is um, not every part of that uh, cube or this uh, rectangular shape that you see her move equally. So um, the bottom moves first and the uh, upper part of the body is sort of dragged along in the flow and of course it, it's got some sort of delay when it comes to movement. Um, so this is something you would need to consider that if you move maybe that your, your arms are dragged along and take a while to also move for example. Um, Slow in and slow out is, is slow out <laughs> is something uh, which, of course, animation software does automatically for us. Um, I did show you for uh, I showed you just a second ago um, how your computer does does that. Um, you can control control it, of course, but um, it's very natural for a character to uh, ease in and ease ease out to or from a movement. Um, so. Uh, it does not start or stop at an instant, but it takes a while to, well, start and come to the end position. Um, arc number seven. Um, due to our best friend gravity, uh, most objects when they move um, go in sort of an arc. So if you throw a ball, um, an arc is shamed. Uh, is sh shamed, of course, is shaped. And that's um, just something that you have to keep in mind that things are not always very... Uh, well, if you throw a ball, it most of the time wouldn't uh, fall in a straight line, but uh, it would form some sort of a you know, off an arc. Um, second direction is something uh, which makes everything look uh, way more natural. I don't like this, this, this example, um, but um, something that uh, explains it best, I think, is when you have a character which has long hair, and of course the hair moves as well, and um, most of the time the hair moves in a different direction, or it moves in a... Uh, well, it's just, just not just the head that moves, and the hair is... Uh, moving alongside with it but the hair has got its own movement and swings and uh, I don't know um, also in combination with uh, that rule we had earlier which is uh, follow through and uh, this one follow through and overlapping action we can see that this and number seven are or number eight are uh, pretty much connected to each other um, yeah so there are different things that move um, different speeds. So if you if you do something, if you move your your hand or your arm, that most of the time your body would move as well, or your head would do something as well. Um, timing, which uh, is uh, something which is not very defined as a rule, but uh, you just keep your timing in mind. 
keep in mind that it's natural, keep in mind that, uh, or that it looks natural or that it, that it looks good and that you uh, have to consider how you time things in order to get the right message across. Um, exaggeration. Um, let me just turn off my messenger so it uh, won't disturb us. Here we go. Exaggeration is um, something which is used a lot of a lot in animation, which is um, of course that things if they are completely natural may look boring. So you would like to have your uh, moves ex exaggerated and your character movement well. I would say, um, well, yeah, <laughs> that it's just play with it, think how it looks and uh, try out different things and uh, keep in mind that it's animation, that it don't, doesn't have to uh, follow the rules of physics and that you can exaggerate it, uh, which most of the time looks more interesting and more um, well cartoony if you want so, etc. Um, number 11, solid drawing, which doesn't really apply for 3D animation because solid drawing uh, is something which is more or less uh, just for 2D animation, which means that, of course, your drawings have to be consistent and uh, your character, sh your character's shape doesn't have to, <laughs> shouldn't, shouldn't change over the course of, um, of your animation most of the time, so... Um, the computer does that for us. This, this is very handy. Um, number 12 is appeal. Um, appeal, is, appeal is also a very uh, well abstract thing. It just means that uh, you should keep in mind that your uh, character has character and that uh, well, it has some sort of personality to it um, and atmosphere and that you well show or that, that that you think about what you need, what message you want to get across, etc. So uh, that it looks appealing. Um, all right, that's pretty much it for the uh, twelve principles of animation. And uh, now you can just go ahead and uh, well do your own thing and uh, try to animate your character. I would advise advise you to uh, do a walk, for example. Um, yeah, have fun. <laughs>